consideration. He noted that Thailand has the capacity, including medicines, laboratories, medical personnel, and other resources, to contain the spread of COVID-19. Most importantly, there is not a single severe case currently in hospital, and the country has a coronavirus fatality rate of less than 2%, with most of the new cases being imported cases. He said that the committee agreed to the four-day reduction in the quarantine period and instead placed emphasis on safety at quarantine facilities and the tracing of people who were quarantined. Anoti revealed that the NCDC also approved a national quarantine policy to accommodate the opening of the country to foreign tourists to help boost economic recovery in the long run. The national quarantine policy incorporates the setting up of safe and standardized quarantine facilities for those who are in close contact with the infected or suspected carriers, the development of uniform management of quarantine systems to be applied to all quarantine facilities at both national and local levels under the supervision of the NCDC or Provincial Communicable Provincial Communicable Diseases Committees, the development of an integrated management system to support the work of all agencies and a data system that can track previous cases effectively. According to studies of COVID-19 infections, if a person is quarantined for 14 days, there is a 1% chance that an infected person will not show any symptoms. If quarantined for 10 days, the chance of not showing symptoms is 5% and 20% for 7 days. Now let's back to let's get back to politics. Yesterday there was a seminar and event organized by COFACT or the collaborative fact checking platform in Thailand with the Jula Longkorn University and also the National Press Council and Chen Fusion Institute. What interesting is one of the former Thailand Prime Minister, the number 18, Mr. Anand Panyarachun, was sitting on the panel. The topic said what is is about the analog age to digital age. How can we narrow the communication gap with sincerity and grace? But you guess it, nowadays, if there is any panel, somehow it always related to political conflicts. So Mr. Anand was saying that the Section 272 of the Constitution, which enables senators to vote in the election of the prime minister, is the source of today's political conflict, and he thinks it needs to be expunged. He said that the clause must be deleted from any new constitution. And also about the least majesty law, the section 112 of the country's criminal code. He think it should be decriminalized, subjecting offenders to civil liability only with fines commensurate with the act committed. Mr. Anan was sharing his view during this panel yesterday. It was about three hours. There's a lot of interesting things discussed there. He haven't talked much politics out in the open that often, so yesterday, like I said, was interesting. He said, unlike people who view this political conflict as a crisis, he think it is not usual. He's saying that Thailand has been down this path countless times during the past 88 years of democratic governance. The current conflict, he said, is similar to those in the past Every seven to eight years, the cycle repeated. Let's take a listen to some of what he had to say yesterday. ในปัจจุบันเนี่ยปัญหาของเมืองไทยก็เป็นปัญหาที่เรียกว่าเป็นปัญหาการเมืองเหมือนอย่างที่เคยมีมาในอดีตพอมีปัญหาการเมืองทําไปทํามาสู้รบกันเสร็จแล้วก็รัฐประหารพอรัฐประหารเสร็จก็เขียนรัฐธรรมนูญใหม่พอเขียนเสร็จก็ตั้งรัฐบาลพอเขียนเสร็จก็เลือกตั้งเลือกตั้งรัฐบาลไหมแล้วอีกเจ็ดแปดปีเอามันก็กลับมายุวงเวียนเก่า The cycle repeated. Mr. Anand said that this political pattern amounts to a short-term or superficial envisioning of the country's problems. Hence, the lack of understanding of the causes. Although Thailand wants to see peace and order, he said that it cannot be imposed from the above or below, but it must be peace which all sides can discuss. And upon which they can agree. ความสงบเนี่ยมันต้องมองไปอีกว่าความสงบจริงๆแล้วรากจริงๆอยู่ที่ไหนมันมีคําพูดนะคนจะเชื่อไม่เชื่อแล้วแต่เนี่ย
ตราบใดที่สังคมไม่มีความยุติธรรมมันไม่มีความสงบเลยครับในสายตาของผมซึ่งอาจจะผิดนะผมคิดว่าถ้าตราบใดสังคมใดไม่มีความยุติธรรมไม่มีความเสมอภาคมันอาจจะสงบ 60% แต่มันไม่สงบจริงจัง Interesting 60% peaceful but not real peace not genuine peace So Mr. Anand said that we are seeing a conflict between generations, the generations that depends on various internet platforms for communication, which leads to misunderstanding and like face-to-face -face dialogue. Therefore, is there is a need to be open-minded and receptive to the different views. So regarding the new constitution, he already said that he think the clause about the senators should be squashed. And he suggests that it should not go into much detail, but it should be concise and cover only the main principles. And he adds that the ability of senators to elect the prime minister should go away. On the protesters' demand, the prime minister p r a y u t c h a n o c h a to step down. Mr. Anand said that he is not in a position to suggest what to do, but the prime minister has to realize this is what the protesters demand. The o n e thing here, t h I think. จะเป็นปัญหาที่ท่านแล้วอย่างที่ผมว่าผมไม่อยู่ในฐานะจะพูดว่าควรจะทำไม่ทำนะรุ่นเด็กก็ยืนยันว่าท่านนายกนี่เป็นตัวปัญหานะรุ่นใหม่แล้วผมไม่ทราบมีประชาชนอื่นหรือเปล่าก็มองว่าท่านนายกเนี่ยเป็นคนเดียวที่สามารถปลดล็อกได้จะปลดล็อกโดยวิธีลาออกได้ผมไม่รู้หรือท่านไม่ลาออกผมก็ไม่ว่าอะไรเพราะเป็นสิทธิของท่านแต่ท่านต้องรู้นะเพราะเขาเรียกร้องอย่างนั้นนะสุดท้ายประธานาธิบดีเขาบอกว่าเขาเชื่อว่าเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถูกผิดตลอดเวลาเขาถู But the protesters said that it has been wrong since seven years ago. And as the anti-government protesters announced that there will be a big surprise tomorrow, the police chief told the reporters not to worry if there will be any clashes between the anti-government protesters and the royalists, as he believes that the police will be able to control the whole situation. Police General s u w a t d a n g y o t s u k the Deputy Commissioner General of the Royal Thai Police, said today that he is not worried if there will be any clashes or confrontation between anti-government protesters and the royalists, as he believed that the police officials will be able to control the situation. The police chief had ordered the Metropolitan Police to closely monitor the protest, as the r a s a d o n group announced on social media that there will be a big surprise tomorrow afternoon, which is October 31st, at t a p r a j a n campus of Thammasat University. Based on the police reports, the r a s a d o n group will rally at different places over the weekend, such as Thammasat University, which will be the main site, the mall shopping center at b a n g k a p i Central Westgate. And in front of Future Park Shopping Mall in Rangsit, earlier today, a royalist group who called themselves the United People to Protect the Institution gathered at Wat Mahatha y u w a r a d a n g s o r i t and marched to the front gate of the Grand Hall of t h a m a s a d University, expecting to grant an audience with His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Queen, who attended the graduation ceremony at the university. They also plan to observe the anti-government protests over the weekend, as the r a s a d o n group announced that they will have a big surprise on October 31st at the university. Meanwhile, the student group calling themselves Vocational Students to Protect the Nation also announced that they will rally at Wat p r a k a o on November 1st. One of the group's leaders emphasized that the main purpose of the rally is to show respect for the monarchy. They also said that there would not be any violence. However, if anyone disrespects the royal institution, the group will negotiate and listen to all sides. So that's the latest on the protest and what we can expect for the weekend.
So the protest is actually one of the elements of the cycle in Thailand that repeated every seven to eight years. Of course, it's a factor of democratic system, but in Thailand, there is more than just a protest. There will be a coup, there will be new government, new constitution, an election protest, and then it keeps repeating itself. And along the line, at least in the past 10 years, every government has been setting up some kind of panels in hope to reconcile all sides of the conflict. And let's go back, like I said, only 10 years from Apisit uh, government, Apisit Wechachiwa government. His uh, party become the uh, coalition leader after the coup in 2006. And there were several panels set up, especially ones involving the United Front for Democracy Against Dictatorship, or UDD, or commonly called Red Church. There was the fact-finding committee, the reformation commission that was led by Mr. Anand Panyarachun, the National Reform Assembly, this just to name a few. What happened was that all measures or reforms proposed by these panels had no response from the opposite government. And when the government changed, those resolutions have not been mentioned again. And after that, next government was the government led by Ying Lakshinawat. There were pushes for reconciliation, of course. There were several panels set up, panels such as the Reconciliation Commission, Political Reform Project, Political Reform Assemble, etc. Yingluck's government spent 180 million baht. They said there have been accumulated proposals from 108 stages and seminars. Then they set up a panel. But the panel members resigned themselves one by one because the ultimate amnesty bill that was tabled in the parliament and that amnesty bill is the thing that led to the protest by the People's Democratic Reform Committee, or PDRC, led by Suthep Thuksuban. Then came the coup by General Prayut Chan Ocha. And I would say this is the current era, the era of General Prayut Chan Ocha as the head of the country. He set up the National Council for Peace and Order, or NCPO, to govern the nation. There was a Center of Reconciliation and Reform operated by Internal Security Operations Command and the Defense Ministry. The panel said that they have studied 418 documents, emails, and posts over 3,000 articles. They have interviewed 75 panels and organized reconciliatory events 90,000 times. The data from the Defense Ministry show that they have spent over 1.3 billion baht on all those projects. There were also several panels set up after that, including some small seminars in the provinces. Experts analyzed that the panels set up by NCPO operated like an army mission. There was assessment, time frame, and among other things, but in reality, they cannot measure reconciliation. The proposal by these panels were submitted to NCPO and none has been materialized. And we can see that it's the same cycle over and over again with the coup d'etat, protests, the changes in the government, and we're not sure what's going to happen next. <laughs> and they already said they're going to send up a panel. They're going to have uh, King Pachadipok Institution to design the structure of it and uh, how it's going to work, and then they will see who's going to run the panel and in hope that it will bring up some kind of solution. And just so you know, these are the stories we've also been following today. Thailand recorded 12 new cases of COVID-19 today who returned from the Philippines, the United States, India, the United Arab Emirates, Myanmar, Jordan and Ethiopia. All of them are now under state quarantine. The new cases brought the total number of infections to 3,775 with 15 new recoveries and no new fatalities. นครราชสีมาปราจีนบุรีสุราษฎร์ธานีและสุพรรณบุรี provinces are still experiencing persistent flooding. 
more houses along the Moon River in Pimai district of Nakhon Ratasima have been inundated as an aftermath of Typhoon Malave and water being discharged from Lam Thakong Dam. So far, the Department of Disaster Prevention and Mitigation on Friday reported that flash floods, runoff, landslides and storms had affected a total of 34 provinces across the country from October 7th to the 30th. Pukredung National Park advised tourists to delay their trips as continuous heavy rainfall brought by tropical storm Malave has made traveling up or down the mountain more difficult. However, tourists who insist on visiting the national park have been told to bring along protective equipment and move with caution. So far, Typhoon Malave brought heavy rains and strong winds to the northeastern region of the country, but has been weakening since Thursday. And only four days left, the U.S. elections will be in place. And right now, we have uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Wibun Pong Poon Prasit in the studio right now. Sadi ka. Sadi ka. Sadi ka. So as an expert in American politics, I guess a lot of people have been asking you who will win the elections. <laughs> so what has been your answer so far? That's a $1 million question. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. Uh, if you look at the poll, Biden is leading. Right, and uh, if you look at the uh, uh, the mail-in voting, you know the advanced mail-in voting. It seems that a lot of Democrats came out and votes. So basically, uh, you would think that uh, Biden has an advantage, but I would say that uh, thing could be uh, quite different if uh, uh, you know unless you understand uh, the American politics for a while. Because uh, uh, in, in the U.S. election, it doesn't mean that when you have the majority of people coming out to vote, that you would win. No. Something it, like four years ago. It, yeah, like like <laughs> like like four years ago, <laughs> right? Like four so years ago. Uh, it is possible that uh, maybe because uh, the mail-in voting that's coming in right now are a lot of Democrats, right? So you figure out that uh, maybe uh, uh, Democrats should win. But on the election day. I think a lot of the Republicans will come up and vote. So it might be very close at that time. Okay? So we need to know by that time. And the point is this. The point is that we still have the mail-in voting after the election. And uh, now it's a question right now that whether you will count that or not. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, the, uh, I think the appeal court, the federal appeal court just came out and said that uh, the state does not have the right to change the election law. Oh. And uh, it's debating right now, right. so so we don't know how it's going to go down. And the sorry. Supreme Court right now is leaning toward the Republican or uh, conservative. Yes, you can say that, but that doesn't mean that they're going to cheat. No, I don't mean that, okay? <laughs> it means that uh, they might uh, incline to uh, design in a way that the Republican would be having the advantage. Right. Just that, like that. Okay. So. It's come to the important question. Besides that, it's actually entertain people to watch American politics. <laughs> Are you to sure? Watch the, yes, I think it's entertain people, uh -huh. especially people in Thailand. Okay. But uh, it somehow will affect us, right? If they change the president or they change the party that lead the government. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because uh, in the American election, it's about the American, right? The American is the one who votes. We don't have to vote, right? We can't vote, right? And they don't think of us. They think of themselves, right? But after they get the new election, after they get the new president, whatever he does affects the whole world, instead right. of us as well. I think that's why we need to understand how the, the new policy would come about, come about, especially that uh, you, you have only the, the Democrat and the Republicans, right? So if Trump come on a second term, I think uh, we have uh, less uh, question because we know that Trump will follow whatever he has done before. And for more years. surprises? More surprises, <laughs> a lot of... Uh, Less uh, questions, yeah, more surprises. Uh, unexpected thing, uh, right. something like that, the way he has been, right? But if Joe Biden becomes a president, I think, uh, first of all, I don't think that Joe Biden will come back uh, to, let's say, before, 19, uh, before uh, 2016. Obama time. Okay. I don't think so. So you don't think he will bring back a multilateral agreement and that? Yes, kind he of will do that. Yes, he will do that. But I think he would have to follow what Donald Trump has started. You have to understand that uh, in the last four years, it, it, it has been a kind of uh, confrontation between the U.S. and China. Right. And this has been kind of big fear to the American people. And I think Joe Biden uh, cannot just abruptly uh, right. cancel that. 
he's going to have to follow through a little bit, but in a softer tone. And at the same time, he might uh, bring back the uh, multilateral things like joining the PPG, uh, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean that it's going to change the attitude that American uh, is going to think that uh, the old way of uh, the old world order that the U.S. seems to be like the big brother, you know, taking care of the, peop of the other uh, developing countries. It's not going to be like that anymore. So we have to understand that uh, Joe Biden might try to be multilateral. Right. And he may be trying to get the... Uh, uh, allies to join with the American. I mean, the American would not be isolated like in, in the, Trump, uh, in the uh, Trump time. But uh, we will be asked to perhaps uh, side with the US against uh, the other, meaning that, uh, for example, like Thailand, right. uh, we have been uh, playing game that we can be friends with China and we can be friends with the U.S. at the same time. But so far, isn't it every uh, administration, in a way, have been forcing other countries to choose sides? That's what I'm saying because of this. So I think the, uh, we will probably have we've been asked to choose side a little bit more. We cannot uh, play uh, both hands with each side, okay? And that's going to be quite tough. And, and not only that, I think uh, because uh, China has been uh, dominantly up in the past four years, and I think U.S. is trying to contain China. Right. And they will ask allies, Thailand, as well as Japan, Korea, to uh, size up against China. And we will be in a difficult position because uh, we, we still have to do business with, with China. Right. Although, you know, uh, we would like very much to be friendly with the U.S., but we cannot cut away with that. And uh, I think uh, you have to do by each country to see how they will be uh, brought back to the U.S. ally. But for Thailand, I think uh, maybe we have to see, look at the see in the form of the ASEAN. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe I think Biden will engage in ASEAN more than Trump. Trump just left ASEAN. You know, right. he, he, he didn't care much about ASEAN but I think uh, he will come back. Right? So based on your conversation with other academics, who do they prefer more, Biden or Trump? For what, for Thailand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't think that's the right question. I think, <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, uh, whoever come in, we're going to have to uh, start up the new strategy right. to deal with them, okay? But let me put it this way, okay? I say that if Trump's again, all right, now we know, we understand Trump for the past four years. So it's erratic, and uh, 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 his foreign policy is based on himself. It's <laughs> unpre unpredictable. America right. first. <laughs> yeah, unpredictable. But uh, if we know how to play him, we'll, we'll be quite okay, like China, you know, sometimes. Mm. Uh, uh, China would prefer to have Donald Trump. Even really? Though, yes, I, I was going to ask you. I would think so, because you know why? I think because, uh, look at this, you know, uh, like, like the last year about trade, remember that? Right. Uh, they had the first, first trade, trade between China and, and the U.S. And President Xi promised that they will buy, he, China will buy more goods right. for the U.S. And so far, he didn't do that. He didn't uh, accomplish it. Biden said that's an empty, uh, empty treaty. Empty promise. Yeah, empty promise. And she could get away with that. See, if you know how to play with, ah, with okay, Trump a little I bit, see. you can get away. You can right. get away. So all you right? can promise big things and doesn't really yeah, have to follow if, no, through? No, if, uh, <laughs> if you please him with other things. Right. For example, like uh, even uh, Kim Jong-un, you know, sometimes they fight each other and sometimes they are friendly with each other. And nowadays, we don't know that, you know. Uh, a lot of people say that Kim Jong-un has been, you know, trying to increase his nuclear capacity. Mm. But Trump said it's okay because uh, he said that Kim is my friend and he promised me he won't do that. And, and, and Kim can get away with that. So I think uh, with Trump, we at least we know how to handle him. Uh, but but uh, that, okay, it would be difficult. It depends on uh, what he look at us. And uh, he, in, in the past, Thailand is not the focus of uh, the U.S., so that's why we could get away with it. So I think it's better if we can keep Thailand at the low profile with Trump. But for Joe Biden, uh, I think he will try to engage Thailand in the ASEAN, you know. And uh, but the point is this, the point is that he's going to look into our record of uh, uh, democracy, human, right. human rights, you know, uh, 
child labor. So he will care more about all those elements. Yes, all those and elements. he will be if, called out if it's Joe Biden win the election. I'm sorry, if Joe Biden win the election? We will be, will be called out if Joe Biden win um, the election? Or not exactly, but somewhat. I, I would say that when, if Joe Biden wins the election, it would be more traditional way of diplomacy. Right. Okay, and at least we know how to deal with that. All right, and uh, Joe Biden still need Pacific as a friend. Okay, Joe Biden would like to build up the allies against China, so therefore they would try to. This is a problem. This is why, even if uh, Joe Biden becomes a uh, president, he's going to ask us to join in, like a PPP. Uh, might be revive again the TPP. You know, tra Trans Pacific Partnership. You know, we've changed the name by now. All right, and. Uh, we would probably have to be very careful because if our trade uh, is with the U.S., you know, we have to make sure that the trade is not surplus so much. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be. So what I'm trying to say here is that I think uh, Joe Biden is going to follow uh, Trump in a, in a way. But you okay. cannot but just not, wake but up not, one not, day and but, act like nothing happened. Right, but, right. Not, but not exactly like a not softer approach. Let me put it this way. But still, still follow what. Trump has started it. That's so what I'm afraid. Who will suit Thailand better in your perspective? Uh, that's very difficult to say. It, it, it's had its advantage in some and it advantage in some. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, if, let me put it this way we have to have the new strategy for whoever becomes the new president. Right. And that strategy will be geared toward one differently. Okay, if Trumps come in, we have certain strategy to deal with the person, the kind of him, the kind of foreign policy that he's kind of following. But if we have Joe Biden coming, we might have to change the style, we might have to change the approach. But we know that it's going to be America first again. Okay, it's still America first. It's not like uh, before, like like, like twenty sixteen. So uh, with that in play, you see. Uh, with Joe Biden, maybe he's going to be less direct. Yes, he will be bring it back uh, all the the um, manufacturing thing back to the chore. That's what he wants to do. But not everything. Okay, maybe just something that he he would take it uh, from time to. For example, now he mentioned that he wants to take all kinds of the uh, mec uh, uh, medical uh, equipments because uh, of the virus. Okay, right. he wants to be the factory that produce medical. Uh, equipments back to the U.S. That is the beginning. So he will take step by step to go and that will give us time to see how we could uh, deal with that. And it's just going to be complicated. And I think pandemic will give everyone time to, to prepare themselves because I think U.S. mostly right now just busy with their own domestic issues with pandemic and economy. And right, right. That's going, to, that's going to be the idea. But, but I think uh, uh, w the world will be Safer under Biden. <laughs> that, yes. That's for sure. Okay, <laughs> that's for sure. Because I don't think that uh, Biden will make any kind of a abrupt decision like that. I mean, it will be follow the diplomatic way, and that gives us all of us, the whole world, to understand. The key thing is this: I think that uh, because of Trump, the damage that he has done to the world, uh, it's not going to go away just because he he left the office. Right. I think his legacy is going to stay. The point is this: I think that. Every country is, is going to be suspicious about the U.S. foreign policy. How long is it going to be like that? Right. It, it's going to change again after, after Biden. How many years Biden is going to be president? What about after, after Joe Biden president will be Republican and will be back to uh, Trump's side again? Because I think Trump's legacy is going to stay on at least for uh, five, six years. Uh, it's not going to go away. We had Dr. Um, Tang Niran sitting with us several days ago. We were talking about world order, and mm -hmm. I asked him where Thailand is, mm. and he said that with the new world order, no one is the real leader. So everybody just have to pair with each other and try to make it happen. What do you think about that? Is it because Donald Trump has somewhat stir, or I don't want to use the word destroy maybe too much, but uh, kind of hurt? The world order, how it was. Yeah, because uh, I don't know how, how many times, how much time do I have? You know, in the past <laughs> 70 years, all right, uh, the U.S. has been like a leading of the hegemony, okay, Western hegemony. 
and, and that was like a pan uh, Western uh, Pacific thing, being in the lead by the U.S. And it seems to be like a like a uh, bilateral, uh, you know, interest between the U.S. and major European country. But now, since Trump came in, it seems that Trump cut that off. Okay, uh, he didn't want to participate in NATO. He was talking that the UN is not very useful. Uh, the climate change uh, is not uh, the thing that he cares for. You know, he doesn't pay money. He doesn't want to pay money for that. So that's kind of uh, puts the uh, the ally to try to depend on themselves. And when they start trying to depend to themselves, depend on themselves, right. and then you have, uh, let's say, you have Joe Biden coming in, and Joe Biden said, "Come back." You know, we want to. Well, we want to re-engage with you again, themselves. right? We right. want to re-engage with you. Come on, it's okay. We're going to be like that. And uh, think about this, you know. And, and all the allies must think that. See, Trump is not the only not the only crazy man. The reason that he won <laughs> is because almost half of the country, yes. America, agree with him, yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't. He, wouldn't uh, what's my, he might even win this time. We don't know that, right? So Joe Biden cannot just come out and cut everything out of Trump's way and try different. This is my point. So uh, my point is that I think Trump legacy is going to stay on, but with the softer tone, it's going to be like, uh, what do you call that? The light Trump, or Trump light, like a light beer, you know, not... <laughs> okay. Yeah, something like that. The light, light version of Yeah, Trump. light version of Trump. <laughs> like that. But not like uh, back in, some, in Obama time. No, I, I don't think that's, that's my prediction. It's going to be like that. So back to U.S. elections, so far there are around 18 million early voters and 50, uh, 80, right, right, 18 million right, early right. voters and 50 million of them are mail-in voters. Right. What is the significance of these numbers and who do you think will benefit from this early voting? I think the, the, the Democrats, uh, because Trump has already said from the beginning that he, he assumed that the mail-in ballot that comes after the election time, the, the election day, uh, is not honest one. Okay, and he's going to challenge that. All right. So the Democrat has been kind of promoting uh, the, the Democrats to people to come out and vote. You know, as 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 early as they can, and that's why the voting came out. But you have to look at it this way: we see a lot of uh, mail-in voting now, about 80, right? right. Now they predicted this year that uh, the people who come out with to vote would be more than in 19, uh, more than it's four years ago. La four years ago, it was 130 million, 135 million people vote. This time, they think it's about 150 million, 150, 160 million. Now, it seems like uh, right now you have the vote about 60, uh, about half, because 60 and 60 and no, six, 70, 80, right? 80 and 80 and 160. So now you have almost half of the total vote coming out. Right. right. Now, this one, okay, at this time, it seems that if you count it right now, it may be a lot of Democrats because Democrats likes to, not like to, they, they wanted to come and have an early voting time. But the Republicans, they stay home. They don't, they don't want to vote yet. They'll do it in person. They will do, yeah, they will vote in person, okay, on the third, right? So when you, maybe when you count it at that time, it might be close. Right. Because I think the mail-in right now, I would say that two out of three would be Democrats and one, of, uh, one third would be Republican. But, but on the day of the voting, two thirds would be Republican and one would be Democrat. So it come out, another half, right? Another half, uh, 150, it should be close. So you never know, you know? That's why they have to decide it on the, uh, at the uh, swing stage. It will come down to that. It will come down to that. They even say that, they even say that, you know, American, they like statistics. They even say that if the pattern of the vote it's the same like, like, like four years ago, I mean, right. Republican for Republican, like that. But only three states shift, uh, namely uh, Arizona, uh, Michigan, and uh, Wyoming. Okay? The electoral vote will be 269 to 269. Meaning very that close. No, not very close. Meaning that no one wins the election. Right. Which means that the election will have to be brought to be decided by the Congress. So if there's a tie, well, a 269 and 269, 269, it will go to the Congress. Congress, right. And in the Congress, uh, the House will select the president based oh. on the highest score of the two candidates. All right. And the Senate will select the vice president. 
so step is, by is, step sort of thing. Is there yeah. such an event before? Yeah, it's been done a few times back. Uh, one was in night uh, was in the uh, uh, 19th century. So, so there's times. a chance that you will have president from one party and vice president from another party. Theoretically, yes, you can have that, but I don't think it will happen. That will be fun. That will be fun, but I don't think it will happen. I don't think it will happen. But yes, theoretically, you can have that. Okay. Right. Right. All in all, Thailand just have to prepare. Doesn't matter who comes up. Right. I think we should prepare, but we shouldn't uh, be nervous or anything. I think we should uh, embrace whatever happened because I think uh, we can handle. Them, you know, uh, if. Uh, they try to push us so much. I think we can join more with ASEAN. We can say that this is a Thailand policy, this is ASEAN policy. And then we have a bargaining power because with ASEAN we have 600 million people with a lot of uh, resources and they also need us as well. All right. So I think that's the kind of thing that we should need. It's like a, a regional approach you right. know, that would help us survive. But if we want to use ASEAN what's it called, ASEAN power as a leverage. That means ASEAN really have to stick together. But yes. has that been the case so far though? Well, in ASEAN you have uh, neutral, you have left and you have right, you have like Vietnam, you have like the Philippines, you have like uh, Singapore that's lean to what, in the US, and you have like Thailand that's kind of neutral, and then you have like uh, uh, Myanmar, and that, that goes to uh, China. But I think that that's is the, the test for ASEAN to have to be able to come up with right. a solidity in order to survive the whole region. So every, the game changed, everything has changed, you know. The game, uh, the US changed, we have to change the game as well. And, and that's why I think the US election affects everybody in the whole world, affects every country. And that's why we should pay attention to that, to see. Definitely. Thank you so much, Dr. Wibun Kong, for giving us a deep insight of the U.S. elections as well as how it's going to affect the whole world. Thank you so much for today. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS World Tonight. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on Monday.